And I couldn't even change if I wanted to I got diamonds on my chain and my wrist do too And I'ma always be the same no matter what I do And you know money ain't a thing and I don't look like you on some real shit, right? All right, bam. All right, like we say, we know you told on dad to get out of jail, right? Mm -hmm. So how much time did you do after you told on dad? And, and after that, was niggas in the feds? Did they have a problem with that type shit? Bro, let me tell you, this. The, I'm happy you asked that. This was the, out of my whole 23 and 10, it was the longest 30 days of my life. <laughs> no, but let me tell you what the judge, did what they did, bro. Did what they did. This is during COVID. Yeah. So the prosecutor, she was trying to play crackhead game record. She was upset that I wouldn't, she said, okay, he gave up all these murders to stay help all that, but he ain't get on nothing with cash money. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. she dragged it, she dragged it. She don't want to file this motion for me, right? right? So I played, I played a crazy, I filed a motion to the court. I said, hey, what's going on? I'm trying to find out what's up. So yeah. it's like a, like you pressing the government, but the judge going to make them answer, right? So now uh, the judge granted, we get the hearing. Like I said, I had a Zoom meeting. In the hearing, some kind of way the prosecutor asked the judge, it's a, it's a, it's called victim uh, impact statement, right? Where the families get a chance to come to your sentencing hearing and say how they feel. And that would determine what your sentence is going to be. Now, I got life of two bodies. I was never indicted to charge for these murders. Saying that you said that. Yeah. So, technically speaking, there is no such thing as a victim impact statement in my case. But the prosecutor saw that I was winning. But now I started a class called uh, uh, I Can't Go Home a Better Man. I even with life sentence, I used to help people prepare for the streets. I had look I, I used to get I got with the council we used to give people certificates for taking the class and everything. I used to help people, a lot of people out. So um when I presented this, I had overwhelming good stuff. I had a, my own nine residence drug class. I had a lot of stuff. So she some kind of way got the judge to agree to allow her to contact the victim's family to give a statement and say how they feel uh, about me come getting out of prison, right? Mm, trying to hate, really. And then what she said, I got the paperwork at my house. Then what she said, she said, Yana, even though this doesn't apply uh, to this case, but she used some big words. I'm just kind of, you know, shutting it out. She said, uh, the, the government thanked the court for allowing this to go on. I'm like, wow, they make the law and break the law. So now the judge said this, I never get it was October uh 27 I went I had the, the hearing to just say 327 months, bro. I want now I wanted 300 months, I wanted 25 years, but he gave me 27, 26 and a half, something like that, something like that. Now mind you, I got life, I had life sitting, so I don't have no good time, but once they keep me down the numbers, I'm gonna have I'm gonna give me all my good time. Um go to the hearing. So I'm, I'm bothering my lawyer because then the judge say, y'all got 30 days to contact the victim family and get me their statement. I'm like, what the world? Man. So I'm going around to just about, bro, I went to not the whole dorm, but it's like 100 some people in the dorm. I went around to at least 100. Asking them, I say, how much time you got? 20. Well, you got a lot of, and then I'll do the math. As you get all around this time? Yeah. Because I'm trying to say when I'm going to get out. Mm -hmm. Right? So, um, they couldn't catch one of the victim family, but they caught up with one. There was a mother and three daughters. Mm. Two of the daughters say, oh, no, we happened with him dying in prison. One, the daughter and the mother said, um, I don't know how I would feel if you let him out. Um, it's, it's not going to bring my son back. So I'm like, what the world? So I'm like, man, I hope the judge don't, because the prosecutor wanted me to get 40 years. Mm -hmm. So... My lawyer filed with you. Helping with, after helping. Yeah. Because she was mad because he wanted Birdman. That's what she wanted. Yeah, so so I'm like, man, no, she tripped. So she said this in, at the hearing. Well, Yana, when he get out, he's going to be fine because he didn't tell on. He kept his mouth closed. He didn't tell on cash money. This is in my sentence and transcript. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I said that lady bug it, right? So uh, my lawyer filed. I, everything I'm telling you, I got all this in paperwork. Um, My lawyer filed... After the uh, after the prosecutor presented the uh, the victims' uh, family uh, statements, and my lawyer, Yana, you know this 
this is how they feel, but you should still stand by the sentence you gave him. So now, mind you, this around November. So December coming. So now you got to wait for the courses of the paperwork. So have my lawyer sent me a copy of the paperwork. December come, Christmas. Everything shut down. You know, New Year's, right? That's I said, I'm going to be cool because I got this now. This locked in, right? So I see the man uh, worked in R&D Records. This same guy, bro, he committed. So he killed himself in forward uh, last year. Uh, Mr. Harris, man. So I go to him. No, he see me at coming out the child hall, coming out from E. He said, boy, you get ready to go home, huh? I said, I said, we getting immediately. He said, nah, you get out this year though around August. I said, nah, man, you tripping. He said, man, I'm t- I am contact uh, Grand Perry, and they told me I'm doing the mat right. I say, this was January, so it's like, okay, six, seven months from now, seven months, whatever. I said, I still get halfway house, so I'm still going home this year. But as I did the mat, I'm four months over my time. I get the paperwork. I go to R and D one day. I go to January the third. Me and my homie baby. Um, yeah, all the dates. Yeah. yeah smoke the drink. <laughs> nah, January third, bro. Sure. I go this man right at the lunchtime. Me and my partner baby from Pensacola. We go up to the R and D. I say, hey, man, I supposed to be home, man. He said, no. So I pull the paperwork. He said, look, your mat, my mat, gonna be different. I said, Matt, the same all around the United States. What are you talking about? I said, well, listen, fax this to Grand Perry and let them calculate my time. Can you do that for me? He said, yeah, give it there. He went down, came. I said, man, he ain't faxing fax to them people. So me and my pop, we walk back to the dorm. We go in my cell because I was in the cell by myself. So we talked for a few minutes. I said, man, I'm about to go get in the shower, man. I jump in the shower, bro, letting that hot water hit me. My counselor, Mr. Jones, he said, Terry Williams. I said, man, what? You better come on here. You ain't getting out. Whoa. I ain't get a chance to bathe or nothing. Yeah. I jumped out that shower. <laughs> man, everybody, the whole dorm erupt, bro. Clapping was happy. Go home. Yeah, everybody showed love, but they were happy, bro. I was like, wow. Go on there, grab a few things, right? I gave all my clothes, gave all my stuff away. I got a t-shirt, my, you know, my great jogging pants. That man, bro, I didn't believe it, bro. They brought me up front, gave me my money on a card. Um, then they brought me to the bus station. I see this pay phone. Trying to work this pay for him, putting a quarter, keep dropping down. Man. So I got tired. I went sat down. And this nice little female got off the bus. She came in there. So she got the phone number and she's looking at it. And I'm sitting down, I'm looking at her. She's looking at the phone. I said, hey, that person can see you? She like, I'm like, my bad. I apologize. I just got the face. I didn't know. So she turned the phone to me. And I do like this. And the dude do that. I'm like, whoa. Dude, I way said, man, back. yeah. I said, <laughs> girl, I said, man, they, they looking. They say, because see, back in 08, uh, a guy that I'm cool with from Ocala, Florida, his mother and them came up with the phone because I had a, a website. Uh, it was called I See You. And and I remember we were selling them phone, but what made me back off it, it was like I had to sell you a phone and then you got to sell him a phone. And when he paid a phone, but that's how you get paid. I was like, I ain't got time to be hustling for nobody else because they put me on. They ain't about to work for me. I left it alone. I remember telling baby, I said, bro, you got new phones out now where well, you can see. He said, man, you lying, you kid. I said, man, I'm telling you that, man, but I never had saw it. So now for me to be out and actually get a chance to sit on like, wow. So I get on the bus and I'm talking to this dude. He juried up. He talking this player talk. I say, you got a phone? He said, no, I don't got no phone. I say, man, he cold clown. You jury, you talking on, you ain't got a cell phone? I'm like, man, people in jail got a cell phone. You ain't got a So we riding and we got off at the stop. We stopped. So there's these two little Latinos. I say, hey, can I use the phone? I call my mother. I said, mom, you got to come get me. Because is this bus going to be a long ride? I'm ready to get to that city right now. 